What's up everybody? I'm Matt. And I'm Beth. And today we're going to be reviewing the interior in the 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness. So the Wilderness version of the Forester is extra rugged, it has extra ground clearance, it's more off-road capable. Uh, but this interior is very, very similar to any other Forester. So this interior review will apply to any trim level Forester. You'll just get a few more toys in the upper trims and a few less in the lower trims. This is based on the premium trim. So this is kind of a mid-grade uh, feature level here for the Wilderness uh, with a few unique touches like these StarTex seats that are... Uh, this like vinyl -y leather. They don't feel quite as nice as leather. They're supposed to be just easier to clean and stuff, but uh, they're, they're kind of interesting. Yeah, rugged, I'd say. Yeah. Like a, a rugged luxury, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but they're not perforated, so they don't breathe very well. So we had some hot days here. We were driving around and just weren't super comfortable with that. You can't even get cooled seats in these or in any version of the Forester for that matter, which is surprising considering a lot of the competitors do offer cooled seats. Um, that's one thing you can't get here in this. And one of the competitors that I'll be mentioning here is the RAV4 Tier D Off-Road, which we had a few months back, and that you can get cooled seats. So one thing to note there, if you want off-road capability and also have some nice cooling on your seat, uh, that's gonna be the way to do it. But um, as far as the other unique things here though, for the wilderness version of the Forester here, you see you have the like bronze colored stitching and you'll see it also for the trim pieces here you will have unique gauges and um, that's essentially it this does add on a few other things like you get this uh, large moonroof here and the premium and up trims it's overall you know fairly nice in here but certainly not you know best in class or anything like that and a little bit behind in some areas too yeah I wish there was a little bit more of a wow factor I guess in this car because I feel like there are just like a bunch of plastics and it's honestly just like all black which is fine if you really like that color but also sometimes you know you have like a little bit of a even fake wood or real wood or just more of a padded leather type something like that and this just doesn't have that it's just basically all plasticky yeah yeah and that is something that yes i mean we're not talking about expensive cars here but you know stuff like the mazda cx-5 for example has more metal has nicer materials with the leather and wood you can get in those and things um and so yeah i mean you can get like a dark brown leather in the limited version of the uh, forcer here or i believe the touring trim those will give you some nicer materials um, but they still don't get much nicer than this. You know, it's still the same basic thing. And even like the screen is an eight inch screen, which is average, but also certainly not, you know, even remotely best in class these days. There's a lot of other vehicles that offer bigger screens, more impressive technology and all that. But getting back to the individual little components here briefly. So the seats here are power uh, adjustments here for the driver. Uh, it means you have power lumbar and you have the other usual uh, adjustments there. And you also do have heated seats here, but like I said, no cooled seats, but nice you have the heating function here for the driver. And for the passenger, everything is manual. So you have your manual back and forth, you have your manual tilt, um, but you can't go up or down. I will say that my seating height is not terrible. I don't feel like I'm towering above anything or anyone. I think that I feel very comfortable here. I'm also 5'5", to mention that. So there you go. But I will say that the seat is kind of off. I, f I feel like a little bit strange in the seat. One, because it is a little bit stiff. I don't know if that would get better as, you know, the car life wears on. Um, but when you do sit in the seat, and I also don't know if it's just me, but I am not even touching the back of the seat here. If I want to touch the back of the seat with my back, I do have to sit back like this. So it's kind of like not very comfortable for me if I want to sit up like I have to sit up like extremely straight um, and then I'm actually touching the back of the seat I just like don't find it super comfortable at least for me so if this is something that could be a deal breaker for you go test it out at the dealership and see if you like it yeah so that's kind of like the way that it's shaped it's a weird like lumbar type setup but it's even beyond just regular lumbar because like my seat, like I don't really have that issue, but I also have the adjustable lumbar here on the driver, so it's not quite as bad. So like I've been comfortable, so I mean, it'll probably, yeah, come down to your body type and stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely always good advice to sit in the seats and see what you think, you know, before you buy. Yeah, I just feel like it's like really like pushed out halfway 
through the seat. So I don't know, the contouring is just a little off for me. Yeah, and then moving on to the uh, steering wheel here in the Wilderness version. It's really nice, uh, you know, you have a nice 9.3 grip, nice little 10 and 2 notches. Uh, the buttons are a little bit all over the place. There's, you know, various buttons that do various things that were always in different shapes. And you also have this other little controller thing down here, which sometimes controls your center screen here in the gauges, but other times controls this other upper screen here in the middle. So that's a little confusing way that's set up. One one other thing though I have to say is you do not have a heated steering wheel here in the wilderness version. And I would say that, you know, if you're out exploring in the wilderness, the wilderness sometimes gets cold. I think having a heated steering will be very nice, um, even as an option, you know, offered as a package for people that want that. Um, unfortunately, that's something you cannot get here in the wilderness models. Um, and I think that's a major oversight. And again, something that the RAV4 TRD off-road does offer. There's a weather package in that that gives you the heated cold seats, heated steering wheel, all those things you want. <clears throat> and it's only a minor upcharge as well on those. So um, I think Toyota did the packaging a little bit better. So keep in mind, no heated steering wheel here in these lower versions. I believe the top touring trim of the Forcer will give you a heated wheel, um, but uh, you know, wilderness, you're out of luck. The gauges here in the wilderness, though, are a little bit unique with the uh, little uh, badge there, and uh, otherwise, they're simple. They do all the basic stuff here, and uh, it's a nice high resolution color display in the middle there, though, and so that's great. But um, it doesn't really show you anything unique, like you can't see your audio information or anything, it's just the basic car info. If you are looking to see more car information, you can go up to this other upper screen here. It's not super intuitive it definitely has a learning curve to it but it's nice you have you know some information on there will show you the weather and navigation uh, you know that entertainment stuff and all that in there so it's certainly understandable why you don't have it in the gauge cluster since you have it up there but uh you know just means you still have to look away from um the gauge cluster a little bit in order to see that but at least it's nice and high up there and then uh also one other thing is you know with the wilderness here you have a front view monitor so you have a view of what's going on in front of you so if you're off-roading or you're in tight spaces you want to see what's right by your front bumper there you have a camera there for that but instead of putting it into the bigger screen here it puts it into this smaller screen up there and it's very low resolution pretty hard to see um, not a great setup I wish they put it in the bigger screen so it's a little bit easier but coming down to the other you know main infotainment screen here so it's an 8 inch screen and you know the menus and all that are nice and easy to use you can customize these tiles so you can have the stuff you use the most you know where whatever position you want it in it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto but it's wired in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto um, and a lot of the competitors do still you know have the wired in thing with some of the newest competitors do have a wireless thing I believe the RAV4 is going to be getting a wireless integration here for the 2023 model year vehicles but you know it's not a big deal to plug in your phone and have that integration that way uh, but you know tuning radio stations and all that kind of stuff works fine the only problem with this system is that Subaru with these new infotainment systems they force you to always have music on every time you get in this vehicle unless you turn the volume down to zero so instead of actually just hitting power off on the on the uh, you know radio you have to just turn it down to zero if you don't want to get in this vehicle and have it constantly play music every single time you start it up I don't know why they do that it's really frustrating radio it's not a big deal because you just turn down the volume but if you're listening to a podcast or an audiobook or something you want to save your place every time you hit the start button it immediately starts playing and it's going to throw you off and be really annoying um you know so i don't know why and i dug through the settings there's no way to disable that so Subaru just assumes that everyone wants to immediately play something the second that they sit down in the seat of this vehicle every single time. And I guess they don't think people will enjoy silence or, uh, you know, saving their place in an audiobook or something. So not sure why. They should definitely have a setting to at least turn that off. But instead, you just have to deal with that. So one other thing you just, you know, want to make you guys aware of before you go and buy one of these. But the cool party trick for you old school people out there, there is a CD drive so you can have and listen to any of your CDs if you love CDs you can listen to that I mean I love CDs but I don't necessarily carry them around anymore because I have my phone and other things that stream but if you love that, then here you go. It's one of the few holdouts that still offers that. So uh, if you're someone searching for a CD player, Subaru is going to be one of your few options. Uh, and so it's nice that you have that as well. One package you can get for the Forster Wilderness, though, is a Harman Kardon stereo package, which this one does have. And uh, testing it out here over the week, I mean, it sounded good. We've mostly just been listening to basic radio and stuff like that. But Subaru's stereos haven't really wowed me. I've tested them out in various you know, Subaru products in the past. They're not bad. Um, it's certainly not amazing. but 
for that matter, neither is the uh, RAV4's JBL stereo. That's nothing amazing either. Uh, if you want a really good sounding stereo in something that's a little more rugged, you know, the Mazda CX-50 we just tested is uh, hands down the best sounding stereo in this segment, so just keep that in mind. Coming down, you have uh, auto climate control here and uh, nice simple controls. They're a little cheap feeling, honestly, compared to some of the nicer metal knobs that you get on some of the competitors and stuff, but, you know, I guess the job done just fine. And here in the wilderness, you do have dual zone auto climate as well. Lower trims will be single zone, but uh, nice that you have that also in this area you do have some padding here but it's really thin and you can feel there's still hard plastic behind it and there's this strip of hard plastic so depending on where you're sitting your knee might hit the padding which is thin to begin with or just hit straight up hard plastic or this weird golf ball texture rubber so you have three different um, varieties of textures for your knees to come in contact with depending on where you sit um, so that's an interesting choice yeah so if you're shorter you're in a good place but uh, the taller you get uh i feel like it's pretty Mickey. negative yeah <laughs> So uh, that's one little interesting touch there as well. But nice to at least try to do some padding because not everyone does in this segment. So I appreciate that, I guess. Um, and then moving on to the storage spaces here in the Forester, you have a nice large bin right in that area as well with uh, two USB jacks, an auxiliary jack, and a power outlet. You also have a nice pocket in the door with a bottle holder. You have two cup holders, this other little slot for the key behind that, and also the center armrest, which is really softly padded. You open that up, you have a nice and pretty deep sized cubby there and also another power outlet in there as well. Also another feature that the wilderness has is this moonroof. It is pretty nice, however it is pretty nice for the passenger and the driver. Now anybody in the back isn't going to be able to have any sort of view of that. You'll be able to see it in front of you, but it stops at the point where it doesn't really do anything for any kind of backseat passengers. It is very large, so it's bigger than some other competitors, but honestly I wasn't crazy about it. Our daughter loves looking out of our panoramic moonroof in the Mustang Mach-E, so she loves that. Um, however, she couldn't see out of this because she is rear-facing at this time, so, you know, yeah. there you go. And it's kind of a weird setup because they call it a panoramic moonroof, and it's nice that it opens up, um, and, you know, it is an extra large moonroof. It's certainly almost double the size of a regular moonroof. But it's not a true panoramic roof. If you look at like a RAV4, for example, that has a true panoramic roof and it's higher trims, and that does go all the way back. And that's kind of the key. And that one still opens up too. But and the strange thing with, you know, all most of those others, they're always a power closing uh, shade, whereas this is still a manual shade. Since it's so big, you've got to really like extend way far back to push it back to actually open it up all the way. And it's just not the most comfortable. I feel like, honestly, it's I had an easier time putting the soft top up and down on the Miata. I had a few weeks back compared to this it's like really a stretch um, so you know just interesting there it'd be nice if you know they at least made it a power close you know for that but um, yeah just another interesting choice by super for sure but anyway moving on to the back seat here in the Forester it's a good amount of space so they're you know right towards the top of the pack as far as legroom goes so I'm five foot nine me sitting behind myself I still have I don't know probably at least five inches of legroom or so to spare a good amount of headroom as well not as much as the front though because you do sit up a little bit higher in that back seat the front seats here I gotta say you have tons and tons of headroom it's really impressive but in the back there not quite as much but still should be you know sufficient for sure when you look forward you'll see they have dedicated air vents two usb jacks but one thing in that area just to nitpick a little bit is if you go for a touring trim you have heated rear seats this doesn't have it neither does any other trim of the forester and you have these block off plates that just look kind of cheap and like they kind of shout out at you like hey you didn't pay for heated rear seats every time you look at that because it's just like not nicely finished off and that's one trim that has it every other trim doesn't so you think they could have justified a unique part you know that looks a little more flush with that so that it doesn't look like just some cheap you know block off plate there for that but otherwise you know they have pockets in the doors there there's a fold down armrest with two cup holders put into it and uh, yeah it's a very comfortable back seat you know overall also with the rear facing car seat here in the back of this it fits really nicely uh, you know obviously this is a pretty nice size you know compact SUV so it's it's gonna be very family friendly but um, you know with our you know larger rear facing seat here in position um, with the passenger seat where it's at I have 
had a sufficient amount of legroom. I had, you know, probably an inch or two of spare. It's not super enormously spacious, but, you know, most things in this segment aren't, so I think it's totally acceptable, and, uh, you know, I think it should be, you know, pretty family-friendly. Yeah, it's definitely not too bad sitting here, um, but the taller that you do get, it might be a little bit more uncomfortable, so you might have to sit in the back or just deal with it in the front. Then moving on to the trunk space here in the Forest of Wilderness. It's very good, and that is one unique touch here of the Wilderness version is that, um, in addition to you getting the uh, power tailgate here in the wilderness, uh, you also have a, a unique light there. So it has a separate like dome light built into the tailgate there. And so they actually put that in there so that if you're out, you know, camping or something at night, it's really nice to have light shining down on you instead of just having the cargo area illuminated. You also see there's a power outlet back there, various tie downs. And one other really cool thing is, you know, in addition to being a nice, large, you know, wide, tall space, beneath the floor there, you have a full size spare tire, which is rare. Almost nobody gives you a full size spare anymore and Subaru deliberately did that because they know that you know people that are using these are taking them off road going off the beaten path and if you happen to get a tire puncture for whatever reason you know they wanted you to be able to get home and you know have the full capability here of the wilderness by having that full size spare tire and that's a very rare feature and something that really stands out in this segment and so very nice that you have that included here as well but anyway that's all of our thoughts here on the Forester Wilderness let us know your thoughts on it in the comments below huge thanks to Subaru for providing us here with this Forester to review for you guys today and yeah be sure to watch the driving review as well for all of my thoughts on how this vehicle drives the kind of fuel economy we get all that kind of stuff but anyway thank you once again very much for watching we'll see you on the next one take, take care, care.